Yo, Elliot, I got COVID again. Every time I got momentum going, something happens. Any advice on how I can keep myself somewhat in shape while feeling like shit or motivated? Uh, what should I, what should or could I be doing during this time, right? So while you have COVID, what can you do? It comes and goes. I'll feel great for a couple hours and out of nowhere, I'll feel like shit and want to sleep. It's frustrating because every time I get momentum, something like this happens, uh, be it an injury, sickness, or something in my life. It never fails every time I'm on the path to something it gets in the way and I have to start all over again. So number one, man, anytime we get sick, it's our body telling us something, right? Like I, I got sick a couple of weeks ago and I know why I got sick because I was overdoing it. I was overtraining. I wasn't getting enough sleep because I had a brand new puppy. I was getting up with the puppy uh, and I was, I was just doing too much. I was just doing too much. And that, that causes your immune system to be suppressed. With a suppressed immune system, you're, you're susceptible to anything, right? Be it COVID, the common cold, the flu, right? Strep throat, whatever it is, whatever it is that you get, right? Whatever bug gets you, it's not because of the bug. And this is like, you know, this is something I think we need to really truly understand. The virus doesn't make us sick, right? Being weak makes us sick. Having a weak immune system, right? How can I, how can I use this as an, as an example? Um, I'm just trying to think in terms of like an invasion and then protection against the invasion, right? Like, uh, like if, the, if, if we're living in a time where I, I live in a castle, right? And the castle's fortified by, by walls, right? And there's bad guys out there that want to come in and invade my castle. They want to invade my kingdom, right? I got the wall set up. If those bad guys get in, it's the fault of the wall. It was like, wait, the wall didn't do what the wall is supposed to do. I'm going to contact the wall guy and be like, dude, you didn't do it the right way because they're climbing over and they're busting through, right? And you could, you could be all frustrated and focused on the invaders themselves, but the invaders will be of no issue if that wall was strong enough, right? And so we got to think in terms of what's going to support our immune system. And, the, and so the one thing that I think will support your immune system preemptively, right? So you have a strong immune system, but also to bolster your immune system while you're sick is sleep. I think, I think that's why I failed. I think it's why my immune system failed because I was waking up two, you know, one, two times a night, taking my dog out. I had, I had a puppy. So it was like, all these things converged. I was training for strong man. I'm, you know, I'm doing all the things that I do in my life, you know, and which is, you know, I just moved high activity life. And then I wasn't getting enough sleep. And then the invader came and the invader's like, oh, look, there's a gap. There's a compromise in the, in the, in the fortification of this guy. And so it gets in. And it's the same thing that happened to you. This is why we can't blame the germ. We got to blame the theory. Did you ever hear that? That there's the germ theory and terrain theory. If you study uh, Louis Pasteur, who was the creator of pasteurization, he talks about germ versus terrain theory. And even though people want to want to focus on the germ, because whenever there's a bad guy that we could we can we can uh, outsource our responsibility, it's their fault. It's the it's it's the virus's fault. We got to go to war against the virus rather than that. The, the terrain theory says, no, you don't go fight the virus. You don't go fight the bacteria you build up your immune system, you build up the terrain so that it's not hospitable to the bug, right? And so it's these two different perspectives. And I want you guys to recognize that they're, they, they're, they're both existent, but there's one that follow that, that the predominant narrative of our degenerate culture seems to embrace, which is that of the germ is the problem. The, the virus is the problem. The thing out there we got to go to war against is the problem, right? Like the, there's so many different wars that we engage in, the war on drugs, the war on poverty, now the war on COVID, all these wars, but none of which take into consideration personal responsibility. 
So when I get sick, you, you remember when I was, I was quote unquote sick? And I'm just saying that because it's easy for me to say. I never say I'm sick. I say I'm fighting something off. Do you remember that? I was telling you guys, I'm fighting something off. I'm fighting something off. That means that I'm actively doing things. I'm actively, and my immune system is activated to defend itself against the invaders. So and I'm just ranting on you here right now because these are things that I relate to being that I was overcoming something recently, right? And so you want to focus on boost, bolstering your immune system, not fighting the bad guy, right? Or before he gets there or like, you know, what we're trying to do with the vaccines, right? Like save everybody against it. Well, what's, what's better is to take responsibility for your own health. So, uh, as you're having these symptoms and you're having this experience, uh, I want to make a suggestion, something that you hop on right away. You can find this on the American, uh, not the American, the um, America's, America's Frontline Doctors.org. America Frontline Doctors.org, the website that has these freedom loving, truth disseminating doctors that don't go along with the predominant narrative on, on, on COVID. And one of the things they have on that website are various. Uh, vitamin protocols. They have different, like, you know, uh, ivermectin and hydrochloroquine protocols also. And if you need that stuff, you can get it through them because the hospitals are not, they're not, they won't give you medicine for COVID. They give you, a, they put you on a ventilator and, you know, and then you just get sick and die. Um, but the things that are, the medications that are helping people, right? And I'm, I, I'm, I'm in, enrolled with this idea that, Ivermectin can help you, but you, you go to the hospital, they're not gonna give it to you. So you go to AmericanFrontlineDoctors.org and you can hire a doctor that's, that's willing to give you medicine that can help you. But also on their website, they have all kinds of vitamin protocols. And the vitamin protocol that I began using and continue to use, and now everybody in my family uses because we, we don't have the luxury to get sick. I can't, I don't have the luxury to get sick. That can't, that can't be something that I do. I can't have that happen every so often. And obviously neither can you. So you got to use vitamins, right? Part of the reason why our immune system is weak is because we're not fully nourished. And so uh, there is a, and I can even find it right here. Probably I'll find it right on my phone. There's a protocol, a vitamin protocol that you can use, that I use. If I find it, I'll share it with you. Otherwise, I probably have it off the top of my head. Here it is right here. Early COVID-19 treatment protocol for low risk patients, right? You're a young guy, you're a strong guy, you're low risk, right? We're talking about like old people. Uh, zinc, 50 milligrams, one time a day. Quercetin, 500 milligrams, two times a day. Vitamin D, three, 4,000 to 10,000 IUs, one time a day. Vitamin C, 1,000 to 3,000 milligrams, one time a day. NAC, N-acetylcysteine. 600 milligrams, two times a day, rest, oral fluids, and close follow-up with a doctor. So that's a protocol for helping you, uh, you know, combat this with early treatment, right? You will recover quickly. That's right, Jonathan, you will recover quickly. In fact, Colleen, the reason why I pulled that out is because after I was fighting it off and I wasn't taking care of myself, I was still training in the gym, I still wasn't getting enough sleep, and I didn't follow this protocol. I was a retard. But as soon as Colleen started getting some symptoms, I was like, don't do what I did. I messed up. I did all the wrong things that I knew. I, I knew better. I know better. But I got like, I, I don't know. I just wasn't doing the right thing. But I suggest you do it, right? Do as I say, not as I do, right, <laughs> Elliot? Uh, but anyway, look, do whatever, do whatever the fuck you want, right? Honestly. But I'm trying to give you some advice that I, in, in retrospect, I wish I would have known or somebody would have said to me and, or reminded me. And so, by the way, because I have loved ones, I share the same information with them. And this is what, so Colleen started following this protocol after getting, you know, it started coming on very lightly. I said, right away, get on this stuff. And she's doing great. She's doing great. You know, a little tired for a few days, but gone, feeling good. So, you know, I know that doesn't necessarily answer your question. You're asking, how can I keep myself somewhat in shape while feeling like shit? Uh, and you know motivation and stuff stuff like that i can't bro this is what this is what i would suggest right again i'm being a hypocrite 
sorry, right? I'm being a hypocrite, but I make mistakes. I make mistakes. So I can't, I can't not, I can't pretend like I didn't make a mistake and then tell you guys to do what I did, right? If I do something good, I'll tell you do what I did. I made a mistake and I kept training while I was sick, right? And I, you know, I, think, I think the reason why I did it is because I was making YouTube videos and I didn't want to slow down my production. I wanted to keep working, right? And it may have not been the best thing for me to do, but I did it anyway. So what I would do if I were to do it all over again, right? Or what, I, what would have been the right thing to do is to stop training altogether. I would have stopped training in the gym and I would have done, I would have done more walks. I would have been, I would have done like, you know, three or four 10 minute walks every day. I would have spent more time stretching, right? I maybe even would have done a little bit of bioenergetics in the form of like bouncing, right? Like getting on a trampoline and just doing bouncing and just relaxing my body, but keep the reason why, right? Rebounding reason why I would suggest doing the bouncing or the rebounding is because that gets like lymph moving through your body, right? And the immune system and lymph kind of work together. I don't know exactly how, but you want to keep the lymph nodes pumping. You want to keep the lymph moving, right? Part of the reason why I look so puffy and shit a couple of weeks ago when I was uh, uh, recovering, because I didn't do what I'm telling you to do right now, right? I was letting the lymph fill up, right? I was getting all puffy eyed and it was bad. So... I would, I would stop the weight training, right? I wish I would have, but I didn't. And that's why I was sick longer than I needed to be, right? Just to be transparent. I would stop training. I would do more low volume, low intensity cardio, walking, right? Uh, I would do a little bit of rebounding and uh, rest, sleep, sleep. I would sleep a lot. He says, I have a trampoline with the kids. Yeah, so get on there and you don't have to do big jumps and flips and shit like you're, you know, you're, you're an acrobat. You just want to just balance. Just bounce, light bouncing. And that's, that's great. I know it sounds strange, but look it up, rebounding. It's great exercise, particularly for keeping you, keeping your immune system healthy and keeping you, keeping the fluids moving in your body, right? So you say, you know, uh, you want to stay in shape. I think those things are going to help you stay in shape because they are helping you recover and they're supporting your immune system. So it's not like you're going to be out there like breaking PRs and your workouts and stuff. You're just supporting your immune system and helping it overcome the virus, right? He says also, it's frustrating because every time I go get momentum in my life, it's like this happens. It's an injury or sickness or something in my life. It never fails. Uh, every time I'm on the path, it gets in the way and I have to start all over again. Well, the very first thing is I wouldn't beat yourself up too much. Don't get too frustrated because in that frustration is resistance and resistance keeps you trapped, right? Recognize it for what it is and what it is and i'm gonna get weird now is even this isn't even from a non-abrahamic religion perspective even buddhist and stuff acknowledge this i because the first time i ever heard this was when i was dabbling in eastern religion and you know yoga and meditation and all that stuff uh i remember oftentimes people would say and i remember uh also reading this book um, one of the best books on evolution, on like, you know, growing stronger. Hold on. This is a great book. Ugh. Managing evolutionary growth, how to create deep change without falling apart. But, and the reason why the subtitle is create deep change without falling apart is because people often find that they start falling apart when they try to make deep change in their life. Every time you find, try to find deep, make deep change in your life, right? You fall apart. So he's saying how to create deep change without falling apart, right? So, and this comes, like I said, this comes from a non-Abrahamic perspective, meaning that even pagan meditators recognize that when I start meditating, when I start meditating, all shit breaks loose, right? bad things start happening in my life. He gives a very scientific reason as to why, but I like to use the, you know, I can't, I don't know. I don't know because I've never seen them. 
but I believe they're demons. I believe there are spiritual entities that want to derail you, that hate you, right? I mean, it's in the Bible. So when I say see it for what it is, recognize, I think objectifying these things is very helpful. Objectifying it by saying, there is a demon that wants to see me dead. And every time I try to make changes in my life, he pulls me back down. And when, by objectifying it that way, by saying demon, right? By, by, by objectifying it, like I said, you now have something to focus your, your energy against. And, you go to, and then you go battle, you go to battle in, in spiritual warfare, right? Sports, spiritual warfare. And spiritual warfare means that you keep going, right? You don't stop. You don't let it derail you. You just let it roll off your back. And you don't, like you're doing, get frustrated. If you get frustrated, the demons win. Demons win you, when you get frustrated. And he calls it resistance. In this book, he calls it resistance. I'm calling it demons, right? Either one, use whatever you want. But I would definitely check out this book. It's from, it's from a very scientific perspective. Uh, it goes deep. Escape into a higher order. Let me see if I can find anything here. He calls us dissipated structures, right? There's no such thing as a closed system. Anyway, Order Out of Chaos. It's a great book. I would highly suggest you read that. Just pick it up. Somebody put a link for it on Amazon there. Well, anyway, that will, that will start to help you understand why when you try to grow, you start having, you start having these challenges. But also, ultimately in this book, because he's selling Holosync. He's selling meditation. The whole idea is don't let it bother you. Just keep going, right? That's what he says in his book. And I'm telling you right now, don't let it get you down. Don't let it bother you. Don't get worked up about it or settle down. Don't let it bring you down. You got to take a deep breath and you got to keep going. And that's really what it is, man. You know, I know it's frustrating. You say it's frustrating, but what's worth having if it isn't, if it doesn't require a little bit of work? And you're trying to be a stronger version of yourself. You're trying to become something new in a way, right? You're trying to manage evolutionary growth. So it's going to be a challenge. And just like lifting heavier weights requires that sometimes there's some failure, but you don't let it stop you. It's the same way here, man. Keep going. Keep growing stronger. Don't let it stop you. Be relentless, bro. So I hope that helps you, dude done yo it's your bro elliot i hope you enjoyed that video if you did you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent king transformation classes with my students where among other things we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness business and with women if that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age then it's real simple just follow me on instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G. And then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.